Have you ever wondered what a sandwich is? This is a sandwich, isn't it? A sandwich is a slice of bread on one side, a slice of bread on the other, and something in the middle. So here, fancy a sandwich. Today is when we are starting a new series called Monday Musings. And Monday Musings is, is about when we, we, we present unscripted, unrehearsed, pretty raw sort of material where things that we or others who, who, who have greater knowledge or experience have been thinking about and musing over things and where we, the people who would be presenting it, whatever it is that they're, they're looking at. So it might be a, a, a body-minded bit in terms of physical activity. It might be something along the lines of the, the mental models that people are working on. And, or it might be something along the, the soul aspects of the core part of who we are. But whatever it is, you are most welcome. So today, here's your sandwich. If I was to open this and show you, Anybody fancy a sandwich? The answer probably is, hey, Johnson, I'll pass on that one. Because here's what's happening. There's a beginning and there's an end. There's absolutely nothing in the middle. And I think that's, that's the way um, we do lives sometimes. If I take you back into the classroom, and somebody would ask you a maths question and say, you know, r equal 12, pi equal 3.184. Can you work out the circumference of a circle from that? And let's say you came up with an answer and the answer was 256. Somebody goes, hey, fantastic. You got the right answer. Now can you show me the workings out? because the working out is what matters. Just like a sandwich without the filling in the middle is meaningless because the beginning and the end are fantastic in itself. But as, as that old cliched sort of thing goes, life is a journey and it's the journey that matters, not the destination. That is so cliched. But I can tell you what, the filling, the bit in the middle matters. The workings out matter. So I was sitting with some friends the other day and there were, there were five of us socially distanced in this shed. And we, we would be talking about something or nothing. How have you managed to, to keep yourself going? What, what physical exercises have you done? Where have you been mentally? How is it that you've kept your spirit alive? And some people would answer matter-of-factly and they would tell you, I did these three exercises. And somebody else might elaborate and it'd be a lot more detail and they'd tell you about the, the, the day you don't want to get out of bed, the day you, you didn't feel like having a, a whole food sandwich, plant-based if you wish, and what they did to overcome those obstacles. But how is it you felt inside? And so what was the workings out? And the workings out really, really matter. When I think about heroes, I think about two people in particular. So you might have, you might have your Mother Teresa, you might have your um, famous politician, you might have Superman if you wish. But one of my favorite heroes, so to speak, in inverted commas, is a, is a woman by the name of Joni Erickson Tada. Her story was one that for her started tragically when she was 16. 16, there's a beautiful blonde girl who stands at the top of a swimming pool and dives in, not knowing as she dove that the pool was too shallow. From that point, she broke her neck. She became quadriplegic. She spent 
years and years of rehab, going through all sorts of parties with all sorts of, of sort of pities and sorrows and oh poor me and all the rest of that. But she came through it. Later on in her life, she enveloped, or she was enveloped rather, by stage four breast cancer. And she would tell you everything, not in great detail of it, but what it meant for her. And she would tell you that it was her fate that carried her through. It was her fate, the, the core part of her being that was transcendent above the, the body and the mind, connected to, most definitely, sometimes wishing it wasn't connected to, but that there was a story that was beyond. But what I love about not her story, because it is tragic in itself, but the mere fact that it has the workings out on show. She would describe the days, or rather her husband would describe the times when they'd be coming back from the hospital and she'd be in the back of this van feeling not too great after chemo and what that meant for her. And so these, these are the things that one endear us to one another. These, these are the bits that, that show who you are as a human being to one another. And why is that important for us and us as a community? Because it's, it is exactly this. That if I were to say to you, here, I'm going to give you some information. This is how you do X, Y, and Z. You take step one, step two, step three, step four, and it is perfect in the way it's set out. If you start at this end, you get to the other end, you will have your sandwich. Perfect information. But information on its own is meaningless unless we can apply it. Information on its own only works if the person who's receiving that information is able to do something with it, is able to access the information in their mind, in their body and in their soul and grab hold of it and be motivated by it. This is where the workings out comes in. As you and I work the stuff out and to be able to share it in an appropriate manner not looking for pride, not looking for acclamation, not looking for adulation, certainly not looking for pity, but in a space that is secure and safe, where what we do matters, but matters not just for me, but matters for all of us. Nelson Mandela is another one that, stood, that has stood the test of time and stands as a giant in history. When he spent 20 plus years in prison, at the end of it he walked out and became the first black president of the South African Republic. When he did, he recorded his autobiography and it was entitled, A Long War to Freedom. The word long and the word walk is important. Because the workings out took years and years of inner processing and it was a walk. The workings out mattered because he was able to show it at the appropriate time and it helped so many others. It helped myself to think about what it is to be in that place. And sometimes the end is not the happily ever after, but the bit in the middle matters. The filling in your sandwich really, really matters. It matters to, to me, it matters to the people around me, and it matters to all that surround us as a community. And it is not the same as, as a mid-morning program or, or early afternoon program where everything hangs out. That is not showing the, the middle. That is showing one aspect that is perhaps glorifying the aspect of it, which is not the intent. It is not intended that we glorify 
the, 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 the bit in the middle for its own sake or for our sake. At the same time, the bit in the middle needs processing. And sometimes it might be your, your bit in the middle needs to be simply recorded. It needs to be simply journaled until such time that you are transformed by your own workings out. That you can reflect on your workings out and then share it appropriately. The bit in the middle really matters. The question and the end matters. So as a community, I would say, hey, work out your bit in the middle. Work out, record and share. Because as we sat as a group a few days ago, my friends and myself, we shared some of the workings out and it helps others to see it in a different light. It helps me to engage with you as a person. It builds relationship. It builds a strength and a bond that goes far beyond simply the information. So today's Monday musing is simple. Grab your sandwich, open it, look in the middle and just consider what it is that's in between your two slices of bread what it is between the question and the answer and be not afraid of it.